This is the third session in the ongoing investigation of the events surrounding the destruction of Lockhart Reed-owned orbital station Concord, positioned near the wormhole designated I-87. The station lost communications on the 17th of March, when the next ship came through I-87 on the 23rd after a lengthy wait for a wormhole storm to dissipate. They found the station destroyed from an explosion believed to have originated from its engines. Very little physical evidence remains, and all onboard personnel are presumed dead. The way station. Continuing from the previous session, the crew discovered a strange glowing red meteorite that had originated from the nearby wormhole. One of their engineers, George Armitage, had his hand severely wounded when cutting through the celestial object for examination. The first recording of this session is the tenth entry of an audio diary authored by Dr. Laura Scannell, assistant medical officer on Concord. Although there is no hourly time on the designation, I can assume this entry was made a few hours after Dr. Laura Scannell and head medical officer Dr. Mona Brown treated Armitage. March 15th, 2152. I normally wouldn't have made another entry in the same week, but something has happened. Engineer George Armitage had his hand severely sliced and cut today. We believe it was caused from the inside of a strange meteorite that had come out of the wormhole. Armitage's hand and wrist suffered severe lacerations, most of them simply jagged but superficial cuts on the skin layer, but some of them deeper. There was a particularly deep laceration on the extensor retinaculum of the hand, right down to the radius bone. Thankfully, Dr. Brown and I managed to stop the bleeding. If Hatcher didn't put pressure on it as he brought Armitage into the medical ward, he would have been too far gone. We immediately put Armitage under for the pain. Brown was adamant, sorry, Dr. Brown was adamant about leading this treatment, and I didn't object at all. I must say, her army medic career certainly paid off here. I can imagine her there, stitching. Anyway, <clears throat> getting off track. After examining the less severe wounds, we began sealing off the deeper lacerations with what was available. Dr. Brown could immediately tell that he wouldn't be able to use that hand again. There was significant nerve damage to the wrist and, by extension, the hand. Armitage is still under, so, so we haven't told him yet. Hatcher was with us throughout the process, and from what I can tell... Yes, he's still here. My Armitage. What I'd give for a friend like that right now. <laughs> He'll be fine. We've been told that the next ship is coming in a few days, and Armitage will be on it for Planetfall, then a hospital. For now, we're going to keep him here and monitor him. Toporov's orders considering the object we recovered. He said that we don't know what it is, but didn't give Brown, sorry, Dr. Brown and I more. <sighs> that was, that was the first time I've treated a serious laceration. Still a bit giddy from it. <sighs> I've always been told that writing your thoughts helps with something like this, but... 
not really working. Ugh. I need to check on Armitage. Dr. Laura Scannell. Ending recording. The next recording came from the CR device of Jack Hatcher, who had returned to the engines of Concord several hours after Armitage's injuries. Like many of the CR recordings recovered from the wreckage of Concord, the quality is diminished. Jayo, I'm down in section two. I checked the cables, mechanics, everything. Double checked. Nothing wrong at all. You sure there's a fault down here? Definitely. Are you sure? Are you sure you're sure? Are you sure you're sure you're sure you're sure you're sure? Yes, okay. I'll see what Thoreau and Ricky are reporting on the other sections. You're right to stay down there for a mo. Yeah, fine, just hurry up. Fucking boiling down here. He's my friend as well, Hatcher. I'm sure he'll pull through. Yeah, thanks for the reassurance. Over and out. Ricky, how are things there? <sighs> yeah, fine. Not working. Fuck. clear. Sorry. Hello? Jago, did you send someone else down to section two? What was that, Hatcher? There's someone else down here in section two. You didn't you didn't send anyone else, did you? No. Okay, give me a sec. <gasps> oh Jesus fuck! Oh god! You scared the fucking wits out of me. What the fuck are you doing down here? Here. I thought you were still up at the wall. Your arm. Hey, wait, your arm, it... You see that? It's... It's fixed? Fixed. What the fuck? There's not a mark there. How did... Um, Dr. Brown, you there? No, just, just shut up a minute. Wait, sh stop. Yes, Hatcher. Armitage is fine for the tenth time. You can stop interrupting me every five minutes. Armitage is still there. What are you talking about? Of course he is. I'm looking at him right now. Hatcher, are you there? Hatcher. You're not pulling my leg right now, Brown. This... What? This isn't some kind of... What are you blathering about? Armitage is fine. I'm by his side right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um... So am I. Armitage is sweating profusely, oddly enough, but... What was that? Um... Hatcher? Uh, just one second. Hatcher? Hatcher? Armitage? George? Armitage... George. Yeah, that that's your name. 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 How in the fuck are you? <sighs> Atcha, are you alright? Brown and Jago messaged me. Yeah, I'm uh I'm gonna need you to send Wheeler and Bridget down to section two. Why? Uh because I'm looking at Armitage down here, boss. He's got an unmarked arm. Um, there's no cuts or anything. What? Hatcher, what are you talking about? All right. This had better not be some kind of stupid prank, Hatcher. This is it? Gilson, get Bridger and Wheeler down to engineering section two. Hatcher needs him for something. This isn't some fucking joke, all right? I'm seeing Armitage with my own eyes. Hatcher, I'll come to you. Ricky, you too? Already on my way. All right, Hatcher. Just stay there. Stay there. Why are you repeating? What's... What the fuck are you? Hatcher. Hatcher. Over here. Over here. What? What the fuck? Yeah. George? What's he doing here? He's still up in the ward. But this? He's here. Here. Fuck. We, uh, we should, we should get him. We should get it to Dr. Brown. Medical ward. Hatcher, where are you? Over here. 
The next recording was a group entry held in the medical ward, 20 minutes after the previous. It again, please, doctor. I'm, I'm just as confused as you are, Chaparov. What I'm seeing doesn't make any remote sense. How can there be another of him? Another one of him? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Scannel, got anything to add? We, uh, we did an x-ray scan of, of the other Armitage. It didn't make any sense, but he's undoubtedly... <clears throat> sorry, it's, it's undoubtedly human. There wasn't a lick of difference between it and Armitage, apart from his injuries on his arm. They're the exact same. Is it even talking? D- does it, I, I don't know, react to anything? It copied Hatcher and me. Said the same things. Even did the same movements. It mimicked? I'd say it's docile, if anything. What I'm confused about is where it came from. Do we know it's passing through Concord? Yes, I had a look at the security feed. From what I could tell, he... It... Came from the cafeteria. Where the meteorite is. Hatcher, don't be ridiculous. He has a point. The row? Not helping. Please, just let's not jump to conclusions. What did it do when it came out of the cafeteria? It just walked down to the engines. It didn't really stop or react to anything. And then Hatcher found it. How long will the sedative last with it? Several hours at most. And Armitage still hasn't woken up yet? No. Ever since we got wind of that thing, he's been refusing to wake up. Feverish even. Sweating profusely, high temperature, the occasional cough. Will he get worse? I can't imagine so. I can't imagine why he We haven't done a full scan of him yet, so I wouldn't rule out that his state couldn't deteriorate. Not helping, Scannel. Sorry, Doctor. So... What do we do with it? Odd question from our head of security. Enough of that, Hatcher. <laughs> Sorry. In fact, Ricky, Hatcher, Thoreau, leave. Please. All right, we isolate for the lack of a better word. Duplicate. I suggest with Dr. Brown's approval that we observe it and make a better informed decision with what to do with it. Is that all right, Doctor? (sighs) Very well. Uh, I'm not sure about letting it remain close to Armitage, sir. We don't know what kind of- enough! I think that everyone apart from Dr. Perron and Scannell should keep away from the medical ward, save for myself and security. I don't want you all to think worse of this than what we know, especially Hatcher. Nothing section-wise, Jaguar? No, engines are fine. She's fit as a fiddle. Can't determine what that fault was exactly. Disappeared pretty much as soon as the duplicate came about. Good. I also suggest that we avoid the cafeteria from tomorrow onwards. I don't want any further interaction with the meteorite, excepting Professor Yoshida's studies. What has she discovered so far? Check on Armitage, Scannel. Yes, Dr. Brown. What about the eating situation? If Ricky, the Raw, and Hatcher get several of the food containers out from the store. Plates, drinks as well. Put them in the observation deck for now. See to it. All right. Tilson, get Professor Yoshida to meet me in my office. Have Wheeler or Bridger watch the duplicate as well. Just in case. Bolt firearms? Authorized. Right away. Keep Armitage safe. Update me on his health hourly. Yes, sir. Sir, Toporov. Sorry. Scannel. Please, Braun. What is it, Doctor? I was wondering if I might talk with the the duplicate to understand it better verbally. I'm sorry about her, sir. She's overenthusiastic at the worst of times. No, it's all right. Very well. You're free to document it. And I want a guard present. Understood? Yes, sir. Thank you. Happy? Of a kind. Get back to work. Turn off the recorder for starters. May I get a yes, Dr. Brown? Maybe a thank you? Uh, Yes, Dr. Brown. Sorry. Thank you. You'll need to wait a few hours for the sedation to wear off anyway. I suggest you use the time for cataloging. Already wasted enough of the thing. The next recording took place in Avil Toporov's office on Concord on his personal drive. 
The timestamp indicates it took place eight minutes after the previous recording. Mind if I record? No, of course not. Do business then. You know the arrangements that are being made for it. The meteorite? Yes, but there is one thing I when wanted I to- I'm finished. Thank you. Tilson told you about our visitor? Yes. Good. Now we believe that it emerged sometime after Armitage went to the medical ward. Did you go back to the meteorite at any time after Tilson, Jago, and I finished our chat? No. And you haven't gone back there yet? No. I'm sorry, but what is the reason Please, for- Please, Professor, when I am finished, you will have plenty of time for your own queries. Of course. I'm sorry. That's alright. Frankly, what with... Yes. Anyway, we're keeping our visitor in the medical ward for now. Dr. Scanlon proposed interacting with it, and I accepted. The meteorite for now will remain in the cafeteria, and you are free to study it. I want to know anything and everything about it that you can discern. Understood? Yes, but... Sorry. Yes. Good. Besides Tilson, Jago, and I, you will be the only one permitted within the cafeteria. I want a definitive report on what you find from it. I'm not expecting you'll find much, but anything is good. Do you have any questions? What do you plan on doing with it? Once the next ship is docked on Concord, I'm going to have it transferred to Signapus. Tilson and Bridger will escort it safely. We need to remove it, Toparov. The meteorite and Armitage's duplicate are connected, evidently. <laughs> I thought you wanted to study it. Wanted, yes, but... <sighs> Can't you see what's happening? Professor, I will remind you that you are a civilian on this station. You have no discernible rank, and you are far from giving me advice or recommendations. We are required by protocol to investigate unidentified objects that emerge from the wormhole unscheduled. That is what I am doing. I thought that meant ships, not glowing red rocks that could do god knows what. You have your orders, Professor. And I have mine. See them done. Did Toparov report these events before the 17th? Before they lost communications? I reached Lockhart Reed, ma'am, but they vehemently denied having any such report. The last report that they received from Concord was on the 14th. And you believed them? I doubted it, considering the protocols in place for unscheduled passes through company-owned wormholes. You didn't find any reports sent from the Archive found from Concord? Nothing, ma'am. Noted, doll. Proceed. The next recording came from the CR device of Jack Hatcher, made during the late hours of the 15th. From the tone and the slurred nature of his voice, he was inebriated during recording. Ugh, shit. George <coughs> <coughs> got bedridden today. Thought the arm was worse of it than that. The fucking meteorite! Ugh. What am I doing? Oh, God. They even let me see him. I want to do. I mean, we've been, we've been good, we've been good mates over work. Look, like Devin, we both, we both just got it, you know, and I like having him around. Uh. Excuse me. Ugh. Oh, fucking topper off. Fucking doctors. Fucking jo young. Fucking. Fucking Jago. He's dying up in that room. They won't even see him. They're keeping him. Keeping that. That. On board instead of. And there's, instead of tossing out the airlock. Like. Like the fuckers. The lot of them. I say. I say that. <coughs> The, they should listen to me. I've been on this fucking wreck for a year. The company treats me like fucking dirt. Funky fucking company. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> I know what it's doing to George. 
I don't... I don't want it to... God! God! He's gonna die. I know. He's... Whatever that thing is doing to him. And I'm not. They'll see. They'll see. Ugh. The recording went on for 20 minutes or so until Hatcher returned to his room still and likely further inebriated, and then turned it off without another word. The next recording was the edited 11th entry in an audio diary authored by Dr. Laura Scannell, made in the early hours of March 16th. March 16th, 2152. I'm back from the medical ward. I talked with it. Armitage's twin, I suppose, is the right word. No, not really. Duplicate seems to be the most used amongst the crew. I haven't spoken a word with anyone else apart from Bridger, who was there watching. I waited for Brown to leave before speaking with him. Or it. I'm going with him from now on, I think. I've included some of the recording I made in this entry. From what I can gather, the twin, the duplicate, retains no memory that I would associate with Armitage, insofar that he cannot remember being on Concord or even being an engineer. I'd go so far as to say he can't remember anything. Almost like a newborn. The most immediate comparison that comes to mind. What's your name? Name. Name. Your name. Is it Armitage? M my name. Answer the question. Bridger, please. Bridger, please. Yes, yeah, that's my name. Well done. Why are we even bothering with this, Doc? Do you know where you are? I... Where... <laughs> You're on a space station. Concord. Space... Concord. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's our home. Home? Home. <laughs> Should just put a bullet in his brain. To say speaking with him was strange would be an understatement. I mean, of course it's strange, but oh, it was oddly euphoric. I suppose I'm like that around children, the innocence of it. But then there's that gut feeling that this is inherently wrong. Armitage became worse during it. Not too worse, but he didn't once improve. He's been unconscious ever since the duplicate came. Brown supposed that I simply sedated him too much, but I know I used the right amount. I don't like to suppose things, but I feel that... <sighs> Never mind. Does your arm hurt? <sighs> Here. Doctor. Don't. Doctor. It's all right. Does that hurt? <sighs> what? Hmm? What? Oh, <laughs> just notes. Just notes. Yes. <clears throat> Tendency to repeat, copy words and actions. Subject Who? is... What? You. Well, I'm Laura Scannell. I'm a doctor. Do you know what that is? Doctor. Fix. 
Yes, broadly. Are you... What? Are you... me? Am I... Uh, am I fixing you? Oh. <laughs> well, you're not hurt at all. I'm just asking you things. Asking. Asking you things. Yes. Were you always wearing those? Those clothes? Were you always wearing them? Yes. Manifested with clothes. Something for Yoshida later? What was that, Doctor? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> how did you know how to speak? Can you tell me that? Hatch. Hatcher. Hatcher? Did he teach you? Hatcher. He. He... he what? What did he do? What... D did he... Hatcher? No. What did he do? Oh, you mean... um... <laughs> he... He's... He's... Bridger, if you would, quickly. Good. There you go. You don't need to look at him. Him. All right. I think we can leave it there today. Bridger, help me with the restraints. Don't worry. He won't try to do anything. Get up. <sighs> Physically, he's the same as Armitage. I can't find a single physical difference between the two other than the original's injury. The original's Christ. <laughs> From the notes I took, I can tell that the duplicate can't seem to create any sentences of its own or even physical actions. It's essentially a blank slate. It mirrored my action of writing at some points. Sometimes my absent-minded eye movements, putting my hand to my mouth in contemplation. Even Bridger at some point. But it did make some actions, words even, of its own. When I asked if its arm hurt where the injury should have been, it shook its head in reply. From what I can tell, it has some form of consciousness. Well, it's human, so of course it does. It reminds me of... I shouldn't be saying this. It reminded me of lobotomy patients. The dead-eyed lack of... initiative. But this was somehow different. The duplicate didn't seem unintelligent or stupid. I'd say it was... almost... learning. <sighs> I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, I don't. <sighs> I'll make a report to Toporov in the morning. I'm sure Bridge is there as a watchdog anyway. I'm not speculative. Well, I am. But I know there's something deeper going on here. Just not sure if I'm ready to find out. Dr. Laura Scannell. Ending recording. This concludes the third session concerning the... Hey, not interrupting, am I? No, not at all. Just finishing up. You told me to have a dig on Lockhart Reed's comms traffic the days leading up to the 17th? Yes. Uh, find anything? Right. We were told by LR that they didn't get anything. Right. Well... My data handlers found a couple patchy logs on Concord's main computer, chiefly in the comm section. Go on. There was a transmission made to LR's Office of Operations on Cygnipus on the 16th. The drive was too badly damaged to find out what the transmission was. But? We found something else. What? Another transmission. 
completely encrypted. It wasn't even sent via Concord's communications relay. It was sent by a private device. And from what we could tell, it wasn't company made. What's more, it was sent on the 18th. You mean... Possibly? I mean, it's possible. All right, uh, I'll, I'll be right there. Gotcha. Third session of Concord investigation concluded. Agent Hannah Dahl, SI 1.2. Signing out. Nicole Tuttle as Hannah Dahl. Daphne Nitsuga as Professor Takara Yoshida. Elizabeth Plant as Dr. Laura Scannell. Binar as Kelson Rickey. Zach Cipriano as Jack Hatcher. Saito Kabiyama as Afel Toporov. Catherine Ann Brasto as Edith Thoreau. Adigail Stewart as Rosie Bridger. Kessie Rudamiki as Dr. Mona Brown. Eleanor Anwin as Freya Jago. Aaron B. Lillis as Ramsey Tilson. Mike Joseph as George Armitage. Meredith Lisa Jones as Superior. Talmanir as Partner. Written and directed by Elliot Summerfield. Additional mixing by Catherine Stanley. The Way Station, composed and performed by Detinta Shimiso. Cover art by Paul Ignacio. A Wired Cowslip Podcast 